We are so glad to be here with you today for our next Sunday School lesson called John the Baptist. Have you ever heard of John the Baptist before? Yes. You have? He's a relative of Jesus, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I think he might be his... Cousin. Cousin, that's right. So today we're going to listen to a story about John the Baptist, and it comes from the Gospel of Luke, which is in the... New Testament. That's right. Do you remember the Gospels in the New Testament? Um, Matthew, Matthew, Mark... Mark. Luke and and John. John. That's right. And today, this story is coming from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. And did you know Luke has 24 chapters? That's a lot of chapters, isn't it? Yeah. Well, today, in all all of those chapters, they all talk about Jesus. That's amazing, right? So today, we're going to read this story from Luke chapter 3, John the Baptist. Okay, I want to show you this picture first, though. Look at John. What do you notice about him? He's eating a grasshopper. He is. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Did you know some people, though, in other countries, they really do eat grasshoppers? Mm -hmm. They think they're pretty yummy. And he has a really big beard, too, doesn't he? Yeah. Cool, look at that. Okay, let's read our story. John was an unusual man. He had lots of hair and a very long beard. His clothes looked like his face. They, too, were furry and hairy. His clothes were made of camel's hair, held together with a leather belt. John ate strange foods, including wild honey and locusts, a kind of grasshopper. Yuck! Yuck. (laughs) God gave John, John, an important job. His job was to tell people that Jesus was coming and help them to get ready to believe what Jesus would teach them. John knew the things that Jesus would tell people were the most important things in the world. So what was the job that God gave John? He's supposed to tell people That Jesus is coming, Mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's a really big job, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. When he taught people, John stood by the river and he yelled out, Hey, all of you, tell God that you're sorry for your sins. Turn your life around and act in ways that are good and honest. Then he would turn to another group and shout, Are you listening? This is important. Jesus is coming. Can you imagine how he would say that? And then what would he tell them? He is the Messiah. He will save all of us. Oh, he told them all that. Day after day, John continued teaching, preaching, and crying out so people would listen. Do you think John is a quiet man or a loud man? Loud. I think so. Look at him. Look how loud he looks. (laughs) Many people came to hear what John had to say about Jesus. There were rich and poor people, honest and dishonest, nice and not so nice people. So lots of different people came to listen to John. Did it matter who it was that was listening? No. No, and hopefully when John was talking to them, hopefully they were learning and listening to him and believing what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Some people listened to John, and some people didn't. Some people said, that man must be a messenger from God. And some said, what did they say? He is really odd. I'm getting out of here. (laughs) Some people weren't quite sure. Many people believed the message John did tell. And those people said, I am sorry for my sins. I want God to forgive me. And to each, John said, what what did he tell them? God does forgive you. That's right. And he baptized those people in the river. And the people started calling him John the Baptist. John the Baptist had done a good job. The people were ready to hear the message Jesus would bring. And you can see down here, look at all these people that are talking, and they're so excited. Can you see the ones that are excited and really listening? Yeah. They are. And remember, what did John say? He told them. He said, God God does does forgive you. you. So he said, no matter what you've done before, God will turn us in the right direction. He will make sure he's sending Jesus with a special message that he loves everyone. And if we just listen to God and we follow Jesus and we follow all those teachings, we can go in the right direction too. So do you know some people who helped teach you about God? Because John the Baptist in the story, he was teaching people about Jesus and God. So who are some people that helped teach you about God? Um, My Sunday school teacher, Miss Sherry. That's right. Anybody else that you can Um, think of that helps teach you about God? Well, maybe somebody that lives in your house? Yeah. Who is that? You. Oh, and your dad too. And what about any grandparents? Do they teach you about Um, God? My grandma and grandpa. Oh, that's right. And even somebody like Miss Elaine at church, right? Mm -hmm. We have lots of people who help teach us about God. Well, John, he was teaching people about God, but he was teaching people he didn't even know. So could we do the same? 
could we go and teach others about God and Jesus? Yeah. Who is somebody that you think you could go and teach or talk to someone about the good news with? Um, my cousin. Oh, that's a really great idea. What if you met a new friend at the park? Could you start talking about being kind and loving and how much God loves us? Yeah. We could, right? So today, our special craft that we're going to make will kind of reflect who teaches us about God and then who we can talk to about the great news. Okay, so let's show them the materials that we're going to need today to remind us of this story about John the Baptist. First, we're going to need some paper. Paper, but we're going to need to cut it into strips. Can you maybe show them the size of strips we need? Yeah, About not too the big. size. That's right, not too big. And we probably just need like four or five of them. Not too many. Okay, what else do we need? Um, some markers. Go ahead. Tape. Yes. And scissors. Oh, yeah. The scissors. What are we going to do with the scissors? It's cut the strips. That's with. right. So that's when you take the big paper and cut it into the strips. Okay. Once we have our strips ready, what should we write on them? We should write a name of someone. And this will help remind us. We could do names of people who help teach us about God. And we could also do names of people that you that could teach. That's right. We can share the good news with. So do you have some ideas of who you think you would like to write down on our paper? Mm. You can show one if you want to, to show us one. Oh, Wait, who is that? Miss Sherry. And who is she? My Sunday school teacher. That's right. And she teaches you about God and Jesus. Okay. Who else do you have there? Um, I could teach my cousin Jack. That's right. You could talk to him about the good news. And if we wanted to, we could always write a couple other names, right? Do you want me to write a name while you show them how what we're going to do with our paper? Okay. Okay. What are we going to do? Tell what so we're going to do So you're going to take... A strip of paper. You're gonna fold it to, like this to make a circle, and you'll tape it at the ends. To make a circle like this. And then you'll take another one, and then you'll put it inside. And you'll fold it and tape. And here are two more if you want to add those. Do you want to say who we wrote on those so we know? Sure. Um, my grandma and grandpa. That's right. There's someone who teaches. you. That's right. They're the ones who teach us about God. Okay. Oh, it's funny. I think we just realized we're writing people that we teach, that teach us about God on the purple ones. Did you notice that? Yeah. And it looks like the ones that you can teach or talk to the about with the good news. Talk to the, tell everyone blue. about the good news is on blue. Oh, my tongue got tied. Okay. Um, Charles. Oh, who is that? That's right. Let's put that one on. Now, where do you think we could keep this um, chain of paper? Hmm. Where would be a good place to put it? Like on your mantle, maybe? Oh, that's a great idea. Somewhere where we can see it. It can remind us of people who teach us about God and remind us also to make sure we share the good news. What if we don't know somebody's name? Could we just write something like neighbors, like we might be able to go share with neighbors or friends? That would be a great way to do that, right? Okay. Like teachers. So tell me again, why are we making this list of remembering to share the good news and people who teach us? Who is it in the Bible that we learned about today? John. That's right, John the Baptist. And remember, his goal was to tell us that God, God turns, turns us in, in the, the right direction. direction. All we have to do is believe in him and know he will love us no matter what. Thanks for making this craft with me today. And thanks yeah. for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hi. How are you this week? Well, good. We're going to jump right in. So I have my Bible out and I've turned it or opened it to the book of Luke. I'm in chapter three and we're going to look more closely at verses one through 18. I have to share with you. When I first started reading this, I got a little bored, but that's me being honest. So let me, let me read it to you, see what you think. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, well, hey, but we know who that is, right? Let's see, uh, Herod, Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Eteria, and Traconitus and Lysanias, Tetrarch of Abilene. That's when I got a little, what did I just read? Have you ever had that happen 
when you read something and you realize you don't really remember what you just read, it happens. So let's let's look at what this was because this wouldn't be here unless it was important, right? So we know that um, Tiberius Caesar, so we know Caesar and and so they can go back in the dates of Rome and see when this was. So we know it was the 15th year he was in power. I guess he was in power a long time, huh? So we know who the governor of Judea was, Pontius Pilate, and then Herod, Tetrarch. Have you heard that before? I have to share. I hadn't, so I actually had to look it up. And Tetrarch it, um, was the word for governor in the Roman Empire. And remember, Rome was in control of all of this. So these were the governors in the different areas that Rome had. So we know who the governor was of uh, Judea, who the governor was of Galilee, and some other places of Abilene as well. So I guess it's kind of cool when you think about it. It's laying out a lot of detail. And it kind of helps us realize that everything we're reading here is true as it happened. We can look at the history. Okay. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. Do you know who that is? John the Baptist. Remember when Mary was pregnant with Jesus and she went and visited her relative and the baby in her relative jumped at hearing Mary? That's who we're talking about. This is that baby, John the Baptist. He was born before Jesus. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Well, that's kind of what we think of now, right? He was teaching what we know. Because remember, remember how um, last week when we talked, we learned how Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple and she um, sacrificed two uh, pigeons, remember that? because that's what you did after you had a baby. Well, before Jesus came, if there was ever, you committed sin, there was a way to get rid of the sin. You went to the temple with the high priest and you sacrificed an animal. And based on how much you made or what you had done wrong, that was the kind of animal you sacrificed. There was a whole, kind of like a whole chart, whole thing written down of how to do it. And then you were forgiven and you went on your way. But did you hear what John just said? Um, John went into all the country around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now that's new. New for them, not new for us. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert. Well, we know that John lived in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. So this is what John's doing. John is teaching people about repenting of their sins, being truly sorry and trying to do better. Instead of, oh, just go do a sacrifice and I'm fine. There was something different here. And the people knew it and the people came. They were interested to learn more. Oh, sorry, I just kicked the tripod. <laughs> Did I just shake there? Sorry. Okay. John said to the crowds. So there were lots of people coming to hear what he had to say. People were very curious. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him. You brood of vipers. So he's calling them all snakes. That's not very kind. Why do you think he's doing that? Let's find out. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? What do you think that means? So he's calling everyone snakes, right? And he's like, who told you to try to save yourselves? How, why are you here to save yourselves? It's kind of interesting because he is showing them the way. All right. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. 
So remember one thing, each week we, we kind of find that it's very important to the Jewish people to know their lineage, which means to know who their fathers were. And we can trace from King David down to Jesus because they kept such detailed records. So this is kind of interesting. So remember, um, do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, this is John talking, that out of these stones, God can raise up children from Abraham. Huh. The ax is already at the foot of the trees, and every tree that has not produced good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Is he saying like if, it, if there's a grove of apple trees and one doesn't make apples, he's gonna cut it down? Or is there something else? I think there's something else. What do you think? So what I'm getting from this is just because you know who your family is and, and your it doesn't mean as much. God sees you and the choices you're making. Kind of interesting that, that John just says, well, out of those stones, God can do anything. Out of those stones, God could make a person. God is all powerful, right? So let's see here. Um, the axe is already at the foot of the trees. and Every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Well, if we remember, people back then, remember there's a lot of farming, whether it was animals or plants. So people back then understood this. They also understood something else that he was teaching them, which is, have you heard of this in one of your Sunday school lessons, the fruit of the spirit? What are the fruits of the spirit? Do you remember? This should sound familiar, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when we're doing those things, if we're like a tree, will we be producing good fruit or bad fruit? Well, if we're doing the fruits of the Spirit, we're doing good fruits. We're doing what God wants us to do. So this is saying, implying if you don't do it, if you, once you know what you're supposed to be doing, if you're not doing it, even if you make a mistake and you repent, if you're still not trying to do it, those trees will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then, the crowd asked. So the crowd understood he wasn't just talking about fruit, a tree, like fruit trees in the orchard. He was, he was talking about them. John answered, the man who has two tunics. So remember back then, um, they dressed differently than us, right? I mean, they were outside pretty much all the time. So they, even though sometimes it was hot and sunny, they wore long clothes to keep the sun off their skin. So they would wear pants and then long shirts. So they called tunics. Um, the man with two tunics should share with him who has none. And the one who has food should do the same. So right there, he's telling the people there, take care of your neighbor right? Tax collectors also came to be baptized. Now, I don't know if you remember it or not, tax collectors were um, people that were their neighbors, but they worked for Rome. So they lived there, but they worked in answer to Rome. So Rome wanted money. So Rome taxed all the people where they were in control. And they had the tax collector collect that money. So the tax collector would collect that money and then they'd collect extra and that was their pay. So they lived very, very well, very wealthy there in the town. They were not liked. Tax collectors were not liked. So interesting, the tax collectors were coming to listen to John. A teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Hmm. 
So like I said, Rome told them how much they had to turn in. And remember, they would keep extra and keep that extra for themselves. So he's saying, don't collect any money for yourself. Do with what you have. Huh, OK. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money. Hang on, I got to page. And don't accuse people falsely. So what is that saying? That's saying that the soldiers were maybe arresting people, saying they were stealing, but they weren't. And then the people would pay a fine and the soldiers would keep it, something like that. So John's implying that the soldiers are stealing from people. He said, be content with your pay. Find a way to live within your means. Okay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. What do you think? We know he's not, but do you think that's feasible? Do you think that, that could have really happened? Because he's teaching them a whole new way, right? And he's saying that he's preparing the way for someone. So it sounds like they thought he was preparing the way for himself, maybe. Let's see what happens. John answered them. I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Okay, so he's, what, is, what does that mean? So for us, it doesn't, it doesn't have the power it would have had back then, because back then most people walked everywhere and they wore open-toed sandals. So imagine flip-flops on a dusty road or flip-flops in um, like a dirt, like walking in the dirt. Would your feet get dirty? Mm -hmm. So whenever you went to someone's house, one of the first things they did was they cleaned your feet. And the people, like the owner of the home didn't do it. The servants did it. That's why it was such a big deal when Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Because that was usually servant's work and that Jesus humbled himself to be like a servant. But there was something else here. Um, but one more powerful than I will come and the thongs of the whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He's saying that compared to Jesus, John is so far below, he's even below a servant. And the people would have understood that. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork Think of a pitchfork, okay? His winnowing fork or his pitchfork is in his hands to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. Now again, these people were farmers, so they would have understood this immediately. We don't really understand this, so that's why we have to look a little further, dig a little deeper. So when farmers brought in grains, they would bring in like, the plant, so the stalk that had the grains on it, and they'd have to like shake and get the grains once they were dried off. So, uh, his winnowing fork in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. So when the farmer cut down the grasses that were growing, brought them to his barn, they dried the wheat or the rye or what barley, whatever the uh, seed was would fall off the stalk and they'd use the pitchfork to get rid of the stalk because that's not the part they wanted. They wanted the seed. And the seed, whether it was hay or rye or barley, they would put up in the barn. So let's see here. Um, in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable, unquenchable fire. So the stalks, the part that Jesus does not want, he will get rid of. The people understood he, that John was saying they were like the wheat. The people that had the fruit of the Spirit and were trying to live the way Jesus wanted him were like the wheat that would go into the barn and be saved. People that weren't doing that, they were like the stalk, the chaff that would be put into an unquenchable fire. 
And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. So John kept teaching them, kept helping them understand. Sometimes when we learn something new, we don't learn it right away. We have to keep practicing it and practicing it, especially if it's really different than what we've known. Like some people from with math, you have to keep practicing the problems. And some people with writing, um, just sometimes it just doesn't flow right. You have to keep practicing. Or even trying to memorize for like a vocabulary test or something, you have to keep practicing. And that's what was happening here. John, through his teaching, was helping them learn the way God wanted them to live, which was different than with what they knew. So they were having to learn new things. And that explains why so many of the examples were with having to do with a farm or growing things, because that's what the people understood. So what we know is John's leading the way. Hope that made sense. That was kind of fun to jump into. But anyway, I guess we should close in prayer, right? Get comfy. God, thank you for this week. Thank you for having patience with us and giving us your word and letting us look through the Bible and learn more and more about how you want us to live. And thank you for loving us when we fall short and when we make mistakes. Please keep us healthy and safe this week. Amen. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye.